All right, the cardiovascular system. So uh, the cardiovascular system uh, sometimes is also referred to as the circulatory system. So it's really the same thing. Uh, either way, uh, the circulatory system carries oxygenated blood to tissues. It is composed of uh, the heart, blood vessels, and blood. That's kind of like a little, little intro to it. Uh, so we always have these questions at the beginning. And then we refer to them kind of like throughout the video and then have you look at them at the end and see if you can answer them. All right. So um, questions we're going to be looking at here, things to focus on, uh, which artery carries blood away from your heart and to the rest of your body. That's a big one. Um, explain the role of the medulla oblongata during cardiac output. Uh, what vein brings deoxygenated blood back to the heart. What veins carry oxygenated blood and bring blood from the lungs to the heart? Functional unit of red blood cells. Uh, and which ventricle pumps blood to the body? And which one pumps blood to the lungs? Okay, so if you have a good understanding of those, uh, you're in nice solid shape for this section. So let's <clears throat> get going. So we start off looking at the heart. Um, and we'll sort of point out some of the stuff we want to look at here. So with the heart, as we start, the four muscular chambers of the heart are the right and left atria and the right and left ventricles. Okay, so as you look right down at the bottom, you can see the right ventricle and the left ventricle. And the right and left atrium kind of more like in the middle, right? So on the left side, you see the right atrium on the left side. On the right side, you see the left atrium. Um, okay, so that's kind of where we're starting there. Uh, the left ventricle pumps blood to the body, and the right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs. So right away we have one of our questions, right? So if you look at bullet point number six, which ventricle pumps blood to the body? Which ventricle pumps, pumps blood to the lungs? Left ventricle to the body, right ventricle to the lungs. That's one we got to know. <clears throat> uh, the atria receive blood returning to the heart. The ventricles collect and expel blood from the heart. Also, big concept there. Uh, uh, the atrioventricular valves separate the atria and the ventricles. Uh, as we look at the tricuspid valve, so that's, uh, you can see that kind of like on the bottom left part of the screen, the word tricuspid valve. Uh, so the tricuspid valve separates the right atrium and the right ventricle. And the mitral valve, which is in the same spot on the other side, on the right side, separates the left atrium and the left ventricle. Okay, so those are also important to know. All right, so let's look at blood vessels here for a second. And we may come back to that as that sort of helps us to be able to picture where everything is that we're talking about. So blood outside the heart travels through the blood vessels. The three major types of blood vessels are arteries, capillaries, and veins. Okay, so let's talk about each of those for a second. Uh, arteries are strong and elastic and prepared for the high pressure of blood as it leaves the heart. The largest artery is the aorta, and it carries blood away from your heart and to the rest of your body. Okay, so as we go back to the questions, uh, very first one, which artery carries blood away from your heart into the rest of your body? Aorta, right? <clears throat> okay, so that's a big one to know. Uh, the pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs, not to the heart. Oxygenated blood leaves the heart via the aorta and travels through a network of arterioles to arrive at the capillary beds. Smaller arteries, which are called arterioles, supply blood to the capillaries who facilitate the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The capillaries are any of the minute blood vessels that form networks throughout the bodily tissues. It is through the capillaries that oxygen, nutrients, and waste are exchanged between the blood and the tissues. The capillary networks are the ultimate destination of arterial blood from the heart and are the starting point for flow of blood back to the heart. 
Okay. So hopefully we got all that. <clears throat> all right, so let's look at, look at veins as well. So with the veins, we have venules, the vena cava, and pulmonary veins. And going back and looking at our little drawing, so we have the vena cava, which you can see both the superior up there, are kind of like on the top left, and then down to the inferior vena cava. And then we also have the pulmonary veins, both on the left. You can see them both on the, going through the, from the left all the way to the right side, kind of like in the top third of the screen. Right. So venules carry blood away from the capillaries back to the veins and eventually back to the heart. The vena cava brings the oxygenated blood back to the heart. The vena cava is also the largest vein in the body. Pulmonary veins carry oxy oxygenated blood and bring blood from the lungs to the heart. Okay, so we got a couple stars here. That should mean we got a couple questions about the vena cava and about pulmonary veins. So, what vein brings the oxygenated the oxygenated blood back to the heart? So that would be the vena cava. What veins carry oxygenated blood and bring blood from the lungs to the heart? That would be the pulmonary veins. Okay, so those are two that we definitely want to know. That gets us done with veins and onto blood. So blood is an essential bodily fluid that transports oxygen and nutrients to the tissues. It removes waste products, including carbon dioxide and ammonia. So the four main components of human blood are red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and plasma. So we'll go over each of these here briefly. What we want to know about plasma is that it's a liquid component of blood and accounts for about half of the blood volume. Uh, red blood cells account for the second greatest component of blood by volume. This is an important one. The functional unit of red blood cells is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is an iron-containing protein that facilitates gas exchange by binding to either oxygen or carbon dioxide. Uh, anemia does occur when hemoglobin lo levels are too low. Okay, so let's look at this one. Um, bullet point five, what is the functional unit of red blood cells? That's one we need to know for sure, and that one's hemoglobin, right? So we don't need to know a ton about hemoglobin, but we definitely need to know that it's the, uh, the functional unit of red blood cells. Okay. What else do we got? Sickle cell trait. Okay, sickle cell trait involves red blood cells that are irregularly shaped. And uh, white blood cells are a part of the body's immune response and remove pathogens from the blood. Lymphocytes, which are a type of white blood cell, release antibodies in response to disease and enable other immune system responses. All right, and then finally with, uh, with platelets, uh, they prevent bleeding by developing blood clots. They work with coagulating proteins to stick to vessel walls and to each other. <clears throat> As we move on to circulation, uh, so we have the systemic circuit, the pulmonary circuit, and the lymphatic system to look at. Okay, So the systemic circuit carries oxygenated blood away from the left ventricle of the heart and returns the oxygenated blood to the right atrium. The pulmonary circuit contains the blood vessels that carry blood to and from the lungs. And the lymphatic system drains toxins and toxins and wastes from body tissues and removes foreign entities from circulation. Okay, so all three of those you really need to know. Okay, and then we look at the flow of blood. So you definitely need to be familiar with this. Um, and so we'll just go through it here. So if you start at the left ventricle, which you can kind of see down more towards like the bottom of the, of the diagram, from the left ventricle, blood flows to the aorta, then through the arteries and capillaries, 
and then returns to the heart via the vena cava, at which point it returns, or enters, I mean, the right atrium. It flows from the right atrium to the right ventricle, then through the pulmonary artery to the lungs, and finally returns to the left atrium by way of the pulmonary vein. Okay, so a lot of times we have to hear that a couple times to really have it memorized as far as exactly what that process is. You can see the arrows here uh, helping to just show you exactly the flow of blood, um, but that's something we need to be familiar with and can easily be questioned on on our exam. So in terms of cardiovascular regulation, uh, the cardiovascular system orchestrates the movement of blood and lymph. Uh, systole involves Maybe we have systole and then we're going to have aerial systole. So systole involves contraction that forces blood to move either into another heart chamber or into an artery. Aerial systole involves blood moving into the relaxed ventricles. During a ventricle systole, once the pressure of contraction opens the semilunar valves, blood is pumped into either the aorta or the pulmonary artery. All right, and then we have two left here, uh, diastole and then the medulla oblongata. Um, so during diastole, the heart muscle relaxes and the chambers are passively filled with blood. The, black, the backflow of blood into the chambers would be a sign of weakened heart valves, such as in the case of congestive heart failure. And then finally, we have the medulla oblongata, um, which regulates cardiac output. It signals a decrease in cardiac output when blood pressure increases and an increase in cardiac output when blood pressure decreases. What we're saying here is that with increased blood pressure, the oblongata will tell the heart to beat slower and with decreased blood pressure, heart rate will increase. Okay, so that is also a question. Um, okay, and Right, explain the role of the medulla oblongata during cardiac output. Right, and so we just went through that. Um, and here are the questions. This is the end of the video. And so we have six questions that we have gone through and covered throughout the video and hopefully make sense. And you can go through these questions, answer them, and be more ready for your exam.